Good morning. Today, 3rd of March, is the World Birth Defects Day. We welcome you to this occasion organized by the Expert Committee on Birth Defects, Sri Lanka Medical Association, and the Family Health Bureau, Ministry of Health. Before we start today's proceedings, I would like to cordially invite our distinguished guests to the head table. Honorable Dr. Sudarshani Fernando Pule, State Minister of Primary Healthcare, Epidemics and COVID Disease Control. Dr. Padma Gunaratna, President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Dr. Chitramali De Silva, Director of the Family Health Bureau of the Ministry of Health. Dr. Kapila Jayaratna, Co-Chairperson, Expert Committee on Birth Defects, Sri Lanka Medical Association. Prof. Vajra Disanayaka, Co-Chairperson, Expert Committee on Birth Defects, Sri Lanka Medical Association. Dr. Saraji Vijay Sekara, Secretary, Sri Lanka Medical Association, Expert Committee in Rehabilitation, and past President of Sri Lanka Association for Child Development. Dr. Susi Pereira, Deputy Director General, Public Health Services, Ministry of Health, and Dr. Dineshani Hetiarachi, Convener of the Expert Committee on Birth Defects. Thank you. It has been a decade after the 63rd World Health Assembly Resolution, Agenda Item 11.7, .7, on 2010 on birth defects was formed. No or little efforts are being envisaged by the key players on reviewing the progress in implementing this resolution or any effects, effects, efforts to add momentum to the birth defects care and prevention. Sri Lanka successfully hosted the ninth International Conference on Birth Defects and Disabilities in Developing World in February 2020. The participants of this conference formulated the Colombo Declaration on Birth Defects Care and Prevention, pressurizing World Health Organization and other lead agencies to revisit and review the actions focused on the subject. It is, the pride, it is a pride for Sri Lanka, being a country with excellent maternal and child health indices, to initiate a global call for action to prevent birth defects and optimize care and living status for children with disabilities. To welcome you all for this event formally, I first like to invite Dr. Padma Gunaratna, President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Honorable Dr. Sudarshani Fernandopulli, State Minister of Primary Health Care, Epidemics and COVID Disease, Dr. Vajra Desanayake and Dr. Kapila Jairatna, co-chairpersons of the Expert Committee on Birth Defects, Dr. Rajesh Mehta, who have joined us online this, uh, from the WHO SARA office, Dr. Chitramali De Silva, Director, Family Health Bureau, Dr. Uh, Salima Balani, VP Global Program, March of Times USA, again, who have joined us online, and many other distinguished invitees who have gathered here, as well as join online, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. As the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, along with Professor Vajira Desanayake and Dr. Kapila Jayaratna, I'm glad that the SLMA could initiate this, the most needed expert committee on birth defects. And also that as a very initial activity of this expert committee, we are now celebrating or the, we mark the World Birth Defects Day. As young parents in past, or even as the young couples nowadays, the most longing expectation of parents is to have a healthy baby. It's unfortunate that 
despite a very standard, good quality maternal and the uh, uh, postnatal care available in Sri Lanka and all over the world, a significant proportion of parents have the children with birth defects. What we need to understand is that these birth defects prevalence has been significantly brought down. So if, in other words, if I could put it in a different way, that the prevalence of birth defects is much lower in developed countries than in developing countries. So how have they handled it? And there are many birth defects that could be prevented, or if otherwise, once they have occurred, there are many children that who are with defects could well be supported. So what that indicates is that there is so much of a room for us to contribute for this menace in the health profession to avoid, prevent birth defects to the extent that it's possible, and also to support children who are with birth defects. So based on that, it was only one year ago that the Sri Lanka Medical Association as the APEX professional organization conducted or the uh, host, the, uh, the ninth, the international conference for birth defects in developing countries. And I'm thankful again to Professor Vajra Disanayaka and Dr. Kapila Jairatna for the initiation uh, that was taken in uh, conducting that conference here in Sri Lanka. And we from SLMA, over this year, that we were able to contribute in two different ways. One is by establishing the expert committee on birth defects. And also I'm thankful that uh, we have the convener of the, uh, the rehabilitation expert committee that uh, who also would be addressing you today on the problems and the things that we could uh, offer for children who are with Down syndrome. So you would see that the contribution, the SLMS contribution for this, the vast field is sort of very significant and uh, important. So based on that, I, um, I congratulate uh, Dr. Vajra Disanayaka and Dr. Kapila Jairatna for organizing this occasion today and also for arranging it in a way that it be provide the public education, which is very important in today's context. And while I welcome all of you, all our distinguished invitees and all of you and the media for this uh, very important event, I look forward, as the president of the SLMA, I look forward for fruitful deliberations on this subject in a way that the expert wood committee would reach their intended objectives. Thank you for your patient attention. Thank you, Madam. To deliver further rem welcome remarks on behalf of the Family Health Bureau, I now invite Dr. Chitramali De Silva, Director of the Family Health Bureau of the Ministry of, Ministry of Health. Very good morning to all of you. The Honorable State Minister, Honorable Dr. Sudarshani Fernando Pulle, State Minister of Primary Healthcare, the Disease Control and the COVID management. The president of the SLMA, Dr. Padma Gunaratna, the two co-chairpersons of uh, birth defect uh, task force of the SLMA, Professor Vajira Disana and Dr. Kapila Jairatna, and all the members of the head table. Distinguished uh, resource persons who are linked with us uh, from overseas, uh, the WHO, and all the other participants who are participating today. First of all, I would like to again uh, welcome all of you to this very important uh, conference. Today we mark the World Birth Defect Day. Uh, in Sri Lanka also the SLM may be in the focal point for the birth, birth defect uh, control and prevention along with the Ministry of Health 
we take this opportunity to mark this important day as a national endeavor. So I warmly welcome all of you who are joined with us today to mark this event. So birth defect prevention and control is a very important intervention that we all have to work towards. When you look at our newborn mortality, we have achieved a very low newborn mortality compared to the other Asian and the other developing countries. But still we see the great majority of these newborn deaths are due to birth defects. It's nearly about one third of the neonatal deaths are due to congenital or the birth defects. Uh, we experience that in our routine data reporting system. So that means now almost all the other deaths which are due to other preventable causes have come down. But still we have a lot of preventive measures to control the birth defects and also their management. So therefore, as important stakeholders, we all have to work towards prevention and control of birth defects to have a good quality life for our newborns who are born today. So we know that a lot of uh, important stakeholders are with us, especially the NGOs who are working towards uh, the, the rehabilitation of these uh, children who are born with uh, birth defects, the clinicians who are managing the children with birth defects, and also there may be the inter development partners and the international communities who are supporting and giving evidence-based interventions for prevention and control. As the Ministry of Health, I think we have a big uh, role to play in the prevention and the control of birth defects. At the Family Health Bureau, we have a special surveillance system for the birth defects because we have to have the prevention Interventions have to start from the life cycle approach, starting from pre-pregnancy care onwards. And also then the, the once the babies are delivered, the accurate database or the surveillance system has to be established. And also we have to see that the children who are born with, or newborns who are born with birth defects are provided with due care. So there are gaps in the system. We know the treatment facilities, there are long delays in the waiting list are there for surgical interventions and also for medical interventions. So therefore there are a lot more to do. So we all have to establish a good coordinated mechanism and good steering mechanism at getting the views of all the stakeholders to prevent and control and also to rehabilitate all these children who are born with birth defects. So we have a big role to play and we all have to work towards controlling these new diseases with all the inputs of all the stakeholders. So I thank all of you for your presence today. And also I thank the SLMA for organizing this event and also the development partners and the uh, international communities who are joined with us today. We had a very big conference last year the international conference was held in Sri Lanka as a, a Colombo declaration was formulated at the end of the international conference that was held last year. And I thank all the international uh, communities for supporting this event and also uh, giving priority to Sri Lanka to mark this event and also getting, and also their participation today at this important event. So I thank all of you and once again, uh, I, uh, I wish that this conference or this event to be a success and hope in all of your support for future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. To provide an overview on birth defects, I now invite Dr. Kapila Jayaratna, co-chairperson, expert committee on birth defects of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. I bow one. There is no greater a joy then the news of her life is growing inside the mother's tummy. In a single day, over 392,000 mothers worldwide deliver babies. 
nature is neither divine nor perfect. From time to time, its creations are flawed. Not all women can celebrate the birth of their babies. An estimated 8 million babies around the world are born with a serious birth defect each year. Out of them, 495,000 children die every year due to complications of the disease they have. Birth defects, also named congenital abnormalities, are structural or functional abnormalities of parts of the body that occur when a baby is developing in the womb. They can be caused by genetic or environmental factors or both. They may be evident before birth, at birth or later in life. Birth defects can contribute to long-term disability, which may have significant impacts on individuals, families, healthcare systems, and societies. In the year 2006, for the first time, the March of Dimes Global Report on Birth Defects described the systematic underestimation of the toll of birth defects in many countries. In the year 2010, the World Health Assembly resolved to identify actions to address birth defects as an important cause of stillbirths and neonatal mortality. The resolution highlighted the need to raise awareness about the importance of birth defects as a cause of child morbidity and mortality, set priorities, commit resources, and develop plans for integrating effective interventions. The visibility of birth defects as a leading cause of morbidity and mortality is limited in all parts of the world, especially in developing countries. Therefore, highlighting this fact and sharing what is already known on how to prevent birth defects and how to improve health and quality of life of affected individuals becomes a priority. This should be available everywhere, in every country of the world, and in every social group of a particular country. Recognizing the build capacity in lower income countries for the prevention of birth defects and preterm births and care of those affected, the International Conference on Birth Defects and Disabilities in Developing World, ICBD, have been held every two years since the year 2001. In the year 2020, we had the ninth International Conference on Birth Defects and Disabilities in Developing World here in Sri Lanka. The theme of the conference was Health for All, Accelerate Efforts for Birth Defects Prevention and Care. This theme aligned with the Sustainable Developmental Goal number three, and its aim to ensure universal health coverage, health for all people everywhere in the world, regardless of their power to pay or speak for themselves. Today is the World Birth Defects Day. This is observed every year to raise awareness of the serious global problem and advocate for more birth defects prevention, surveillance, care, and research. We urge the public, governments, non-governmental agencies, policymakers, researchers, and healthcare providers worldwide to work together towards a healthier, future for children. In Sri Lanka, every year, around 5,800 babies are born with a birth defect. Out of them, 30% have serious birth defects. Even if they survive, 
they cannot have an independent life. Heart defects and limb deformities are the major birth defects entities in Sri Lanka. Approximately 9,500 children with birth defects are admitted to hospitals for care in a year with an estimated expenditure of 38 million rupees. Out of 2,800 infant deaths, 26% in number 745 are due to birth defects. Ladies and gentlemen, many birth defects are preventable and those living with birth defects can be supported to reach their optimal status of well-being. There are many things we can do to prevent birth defects and ensure better life for those affected. We together can make it a reality. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. To provide an to provide an introduction on Colombo Declaration on Birth Defects Care and Prevention, I now cordially invite Professor Vajira Disanayaka, Co-Chairperson, Expert Committee on Birth Defects, Sri Lanka Medical Association. Good morning, everybody. Honorable Sudarshini Fernando Pule, the Minister for Primary Care, Epidemics and COVID Prevention. Dr. Padma Gunaratna, the President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Dr. Chitramali De Silva, the Director of the Family Health Bureau. Dr. Kapila Jayaratna, the Co-Chair of the Expert Committee on Birth Defects at the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Other distinguished invitees, on the head table, distinguished invitees on site, as well as those joining us on Zoom, especially Dr. Rajesh Mehta from the World Health Organization Sierra office in New Delhi, and Dr. Salima Valani, the Vice President of March of Dimes, joining us from USA. Other distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen, my task this morning was to introduce to you the Colombo Declaration, the document that came out of the International Conference on Birth Defects and Disabilities in the Developing World that Sri Lanka was proud to host last year before the full brunt of the COVID pandemic uh, hit us. So in February last year, 400 of the leading researchers, care providers, makers, as well as of birth defects, prevention, care, and prevention met in Colombo. They came from 36 countries from around the world. They deliberated on birth defects prevention. They also took cognizance of the fact that it has been 10 years since the World Health Assembly resolution on birth defects in May 2010 in Geneva and deliberated on what has to be done now and what could be done in the future for birth defects prevention and care. The deliberations found its way into the Colombo Declaration, uh, which was a call to accelerate efforts towards birth defects care and prevention to achieve health for all. The conference was co-organized by many organizations. So therefore, the, um, 
the partners which came about to or came came together to um, support the declaration consisted of those from around the world. They included the Sri Lanka Medical Association, March of Dimes USA, the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the World Health Organization, the Ministry of Health led by the Family Health Bureau, the University of Colombo, the Sri, uh, Sri Lanka College of Pediatricians, the College of Community Physicians of Sri Lanka, the Health Informatics Society of Sri Lanka, the Perinatal Society of Sri Lanka, the Sri Lanka Association for Child Development, the Sri Lanka Association for Ped of Pediatric Surgeons, the Sri Lanka Heart Association, the Cerebral Palsy uh, Alliance of Australia, Emory University in, U in USA, the Commonwealth Medical Association, the Genomic Medicine Foundation of UK, Nutrition International Canada, Preparing for Life Netherlands, and the United Nations Population Fund. These partners, through the Colombo Declaration on Birth Defects, Care, and Prevention, call on the World Health Organization, as well as other international development partners for urgent action on, a, on um, 16 areas ranging from policy and policy education and action uh, to accelerate care and prevention of birth defects. Those actions are encapsulated in the declaration. And I, I invite you to look at the declaration in the interest of time. I'm not going to go through those act actions. However, today, this morning, after we have you know, gone through the brunt of the pandemic, uh, it is our intention to once again draw the attention of the world community uh, to the act actions encapsulated in the declaration. So symbolically, um, Madam Minister, we'd like to relaunch the declaration by handing it over to you once again, so that we, as we emerge out of the pandemic, uh, can have or uh, can take a moment to reflect on the actions that we all agreed on last year so that we could pay attention uh, to this important, um, uh, important activity that we embarked on last year, that is birth defects, care and prevention. So with those words, may I invite the, um, um, my co-chair as well as the minister to, um, uh, and the dignitaries on the head table to uh, come forward uh, uh, to uh, receive the um, declaration uh, from us. Thank you very much. Dr. Kapila Jayaratna and Professor Vajra Disanayaka will now be presenting the Colombo Declaration of Birth Defects to the following dignitaries. Honorable Dr. Sudarshani Fernando Pulle, State Minister of Primary Healthcare, Epidemics and COVID Disease Control. Dr. Padma Gunaratna, President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Dr. Chitramali De Silva, Director of the Family Health Bureau. Dr. Manjula Dhanwansuriya, National Professional Officer of the World Health Organization, Sri Lanka. And Dr. Susi Pereira, Dr. Saraji Virasekara, Secretary, Sri Lanka Medical Association Expert Committee on Rehabilitation and past president of the Sri Lanka Association for Child Development. Now we will be listening to a recorded message from March of Dimes, Dr. Salima Valani, Vice President, Global Programs, March of Dimes, United States of America. I don't know about you, but I just keep thinking about the 2020 conference all the time. It was just a year ago, many of us were together in Sri Lanka. 
at the ninth international conference on birth defects and disabilities in the developing world what a remarkable conference it was hosted by sri lanka medical association and organized by march of dimes and cdc it was attended by close to 400 people from 35 countries today we are meeting to remind ourselves of the commitment we all made in the form of colombo declaration on birth defects care and prevention last year at the conference although our world has turned upside down soon after the conference due to the covid-19 pandemic i would like to remind ourselves that the colombo declaration and its call to action to accelerate care and prevention of birth defects needs our attention today more than ever before this pandemic has brought to light the issues of health related inequalities in our world it has also shown the weakness in the health systems even of the high income countries and the failures of governments to provide care for those who need it most it has highlighted the importance of data for decision making and one other thing this pandemic has reminded us that prevention is the key to addressing a global health problem isn't this exactly what we have been advocating for the global health issue of birth defects on this world birth defects day i want us to think about this pandemic as an opportunity to further amplify awareness of the inequalities in birth defects prevalence and mortality we have known this for a long time we now need to make sure that we continue to advocate for not only advancing care but also surveillance and prevention of birth defects all of this we have outlined in the colombo declaration we need to write and speak about this pandemic and how it has magnified the suffering of many individuals and families that suffer or are affected by birth defects and disabilities we need to form new alliances and perhaps revive our partnerships from before to advance birth defects care and prevention if you still have the program from cdc uh, from our icbd conference in sri lanka or all the business cards we all collected let's take them out let's reach out to a colleague to partners and let's start acting on the colombo declaration commitment we made with a united voice i really thank you for inviting me to this meeting and uh, i hope you have a good time and a very collegial productive discussion thank you so much next joining us virtually from the world health organization of the southeast asian regional office is dr rajesh mehta regional advisor for newborn child and adolescent health from the who cro who will be representing dr nina raina senior advisor child and adolescent health of the who southeast asian regional office good morning and i everyone uh the honorable minister in the room and the dignitaries uh, who are in the assembled in this physical space and all my colleagues uh, who are virtually connected uh, because of the pandemic's effect on our day to day living uh, i am so uh, grateful for this invitation to join uh, the stakeholders uh, as we did last year physically in colombo uh, under the able uh, organization by the slma my friend professor wajira and uh, dr uh, kapila uh, so uh, gives me an opportunity to join efforts with all the stakeholders from who uh, and remind ourselves that who cro actually started the work on birth defects in 2011 uh, soon after uh, the world health resolution uh, in the assembly of 2010 uh, which was mentioned in the call to declaration uh, which was just read by professor wajira Uh, so we were lucky to have uh, important uh, partners right from the beginning like uh, the national center for birth defects and disabilities at uh, centers for disease control and prevention uh, usa atlanta my friend salima is here we have been receiving support from march of dimes 
ICBDSR, which is uh, International Clearing House for Body Fats, International Federation for Spina Bifida and um, Hydrocephalus, uh, Food Fortification Initiative. Uh, but more importantly, um, uh, we have been able to have support from the national governments uh, in the region uh, so that uh, we could uh, work with them uh, and reach a stage where all uh, 11 countries in the region um, have uh, included the prevent the interventions for prevention, uh, control uh, and control of birth defects, uh, including surveillance and uh, long-term care uh, in their national plans. And it has been fortunate that there were existing programs like uh, programs for mothers, newborn children, uh, and uh, nutrition, immunization, NCD prevention, all of them carry now messages uh, for birth defect prevention and uh, the treatment capacity, the diagnostic capacity to detect and screen the birth defects in time uh, have already started augmenting. A clear example is the augmentation of uh, pediatric cardiac surgeries in Sri Lanka uh, because this did confirm that the congenital heart disease is the commonest birth defect in that country, uh, which is globally true, true as well. So we have, we have seen such shining examples uh, that birth defect surveillance is now included in the national health information system like in Sri Lanka. And uh, there are now seven countries who also benefit from our online database in the, uh, in the region, which is supported by WHO CDC Collaborative, the SEAR and BBD, uh, where they submit data online. And we build capacity in uh, both the data capture and data quality and analysis. So we are pleased to continue that um, support in the region. Uh, and today, my regional director, Dr. Poonam Singh uh, from WHO Cero, has also issued a media statement and uh, a statement on website uh, observing the World Bird Defect Day today. And uh, we are, uh, the WHO Cero is the uh, founding partner uh, of uh, this World Bird Defect Day uh, movement uh, since 2015. So we are so grateful to all stakeholders. Uh, many of them were there uh, last time uh, in the uh, international conference in Colombo and they are connected, several of them are connected today. Uh, we must continue to you know, scale up uh, some uh, interventions which are well known, like six countries in the region, including Sri Lanka, have controlled uh, congenital rubella syndrome by offering a universal immunization to rubella vaccine. Uh, such an enormous uh, you know, benefit to the uh, society, uh, preventing rubella, but also preventing congenital rubella syndrome, which is associated with multiple and serious birth defects. Uh, similarly, there is a scope to scale up uh, uh, efforts to uh, use folic acid fortification strategy as a public health measure uh, to prevent neural tube defects along with the supplementation strategies so that we can prevent the, uh, the serious and disabling birth defects related to the uh, spine and the brain, uh, which are so unfortunate, they are so much preventable. So uh, ending by again uh, calling out to everyone that uh, we must join uh, our hands together with multiple stakeholders in this multi-dimensional effort and multi-sectoral programming, uh, which is required uh, to, to, to address the uh, important public health burden of birth defects. Uh, as far as the World Health Assembly resolution and the call to action uh, to, to do some review and reporting, I would encourage member states like Sri Lanka to take lead and uh, raise this issue in World Health Assembly when the opportunity is there uh, so that uh, the, the whole assembly, the whole community of national governments uh, is able to pay attention uh, to this uh, important public health issue. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Vajira and uh, Dr. Kapila and the government of Sri Lanka for inviting us uh, to this occasion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, to speak on the role of the government on birth defects, I cordially invite Honorable Dr. Sudarshini Fernando Pule, State Minister of Primary Health Care, Epidemics and COVID Disease Control. Dr. Padma Gunaratne, President of uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association. Dr. Kapila Jayaratna and Professor Vajira Disanayaka, co-chairs of the SLMA Expert Committee on Birth Defects. Dr. Chitra Mali, De Silva Director, Family Health Bureau. The distinguished invitees uh, of the head table. 
Dr. Salima, Vice President of the Global Program on March of Dimes. Dr. Rajesh Mehta, representing uh, WHO Sierra. Other distinguished invitees, virtual participants, ladies and gentlemen. It's with great pleasure that I attend this event to observe World Birth Defects Day, jointly organized by SLM Expert Committee on Birth Defects and Family Health Bureau. World Birth Defects Day observed on March 3rd each year, unites people and organizations working in the field of birth defects. I thank the organizing committee for inviting me as the chief guest at this event of both local and global significance. We were happy as a nation with excellent indices in maternal and child health to have hosted the ninth international conference on birth defects and disabilities in developing world last year. I congratulate the Sri Lanka Medical Association, Family Health Bureau, and other partnering local and global professional organizations for issuing the Colombo Declaration on Birth Defects, Care and Prevention, pressurizing World Health Organization and other agencies to revisit and review the actions focused on the subject. Every parent wishes for a healthy child, but it is not the case in all childbirths. Some babies are born with defects. Birth defects are emerging as a leading cause of morbidity and mortality among children nationally and globally. They are a major burden to the healthcare services, especially in developing countries. With the reduction of child mortality, the relative significance of birth defects has increased. The vision of the government of Sri Lanka aims for a country where every pregnancy is planned and wanted. Every birth is celebrated and babies and children survive thrive and reach their full potential. In such a context, all children born with a birth defect should be identified and cared for optimally. We must also work on programs and policies for prevention. As we know that many birth defects can be prevented by providing women and their partners preconception care and counseling. Lastly, surveillance programs are critical so that all birth defects are counted. It is noteworthy that during the past few decades, Sri Lanka has reduced infant and child deaths by providing quality care at both field and institutional level. Our infant mortality level is in par with developed countries with only eight babies dying out of thousand babies born alive. Birth defects is a leading cause of infant deaths. Obviously still more have to be done. I have come to know that there are many best practices that have been developed in various parts of the world to prevent birth defects and care for those with these conditions based on scientific evidence. I believe it is vital that we all should come together to share the scientific evidence and showcase the best practices so that we could learn from each other and implement these practices to improve lives of children in our respective nations. I thank March of Dimes, World Health Organization, Sri Lanka Medical Association and Family Health Bureau for capitalizing the momentum generated by ICBD 2020 and further working towards prevention and care of birth defects. I am delighted to see all of you, the key players in the field of prevention and treatment of birth defects and disabilities from all over the world, coming together to pressurize governments and other international bodies to focus on birth defects, prevention and care. I wish all of you success in your efforts to care for the children with birth defects. Thank you very much and have a pleasant day. Other api ja loka upat abadi, they can upate the Siduan abadi, see Karana Davasa Martha Tumenida, Matanaki Tamatu Vadagatuna, Makada Lankava Gatama, Pi, Matu, the Sauke Darsha cutting up a Bohomi dream in a Vishesha Mark to Marana Bohomadu, Laduru Marana Bohomadu. Uh, Rata Katiata Api uh, Vishala Harebara Karlatina, Matusaha Lama Sauke Seva Haraha, Visheshim Roga Valaquima Saha, Roga Pratika Ranching, Api the Riati Hila City Up, Api Dakino, Avarshaka Topat, Tunlaksha Visipanda Hakutra Venakota, Panda Satasia Kutra, the Aru Podinoa, Abad Sahita Hammer, the Maupe Gim Parthanava, Nirogi Darwe, Bihikaran. A Nirogi Darwata, a Avashikana Prashasta, 
රැකවරණය සෞඛ්‍ය පෝෂණය මනෝ සමාජයේ රැකවරණය ලබා දීලා මේ රටේ යහපත් පුරවැසියෙක් කරන්න තමයි හැම අම්මා තාත්තා කෙනෙක්ම බලන්නේ. ඒ වගේම රටකට ඉතාමත්ම වැදගත් වෙනවා මේ නිරෝගී උපත. මොකද මානව සම්පත තමයි මේ උපතත් එක්ක රටට දායාද වෙන්නේ. ඒතර මේ මානව සම්පත නිරෝගී යහ නිරෝගී නැ ඒ වගේම හොඳ රැකවරණයක් ලැබුණ නම් ඒ වගේම මේ මානව සම්පත දියුණු කරන්න ඒ ලැබෙන ඒ අවස්ථා වලින් ප්‍රශස්ත රැකවරණය ලැබිලා විශේෂයෙන්ම අධ්‍යාපනයේ හරියට ලැබලා මේ රටේ සාර්ථක වැඩි හිටිය වෙන්න මම හිතන්නේ හැම දරුවෙකුටම අයිතියක් තියෙනවා. හැබැයි මේ ආබාධ සහිතව උපදින දරුවෝ නිසා රටක් හැටියට මානව සම්පතේ යම් කිසි කොටසක් පසු බෑමකට ලක් වෙනවා. ඒතර රට මානව සම්පතට විශාල මුදලක් වියදම් කරනවා. හැබැයි මේ සියලුම දරුවන්ට ප්‍රශස්ත වැඩි හිටිය හැටියට මේ යන්න බැරි වුණොත් මේ රටේ මානව සම්පතේ යම් කිසි අඩුපාඩුවක් තියෙනවා නේ පුළුවන්. ඒ වගේම තමයි වෛද්‍ය කපිල ජයරත්න විශේෂඥ වෛද්‍යතුමත් කිව්වා වසරකට මිලියන 38ක් විතර වැය කරනවා කියලා මේ දරුවන්ව රැක බලා ගැනීම වෙන. ඒතර මේ දරුවා පවුලට පවුල තුල විශාල සමාජීය ගැටලුවට මුහුණ දෙනවා. රටක් හැටියට ගත්තම විශාල ගැටලුවකට මුහුණ දෙනවා. මේ මානව සම්පතේ විවිධ අඩුපාඩු නිසා ඒ නිසා ප්‍රශස්ත රැකවරණය ලැබලා සාර්ථක වැඩි හිටිය හැටියට රටේ සංවර්ධනයට දායකත්වය ලබා දීමට හැකියාව ලැබෙන්නේ නැහැ. ඒ නිසා මම හිතන්නේ ඉතාමත් වැදගත් වෙනවා මේ උපත් ආබාධ වලක්වා ගැනීම. අපිට පුළුවන් නම් විවිධ වැඩසටහන් හරහා මේ උපත් ආබාධ ඇතිවීම වලක්වා ගන්න අපි සමහර දේව සාර්ථකව කරලා තියෙනවා. රුබෙල්ලා එන්නත් කරනේ බෝලික් අම්ලේ පළවෙනි මාස තුනේ ලබා දීම හරහා යම් ආබාධ අපි අඩු කරගත්තත් අපිට තවත් මම හිතන්නේ විශේෂ වැඩපිළිවෙල රජයේ දිහත් වීම වැඩසටහන හරහා අපි දියත් කරගත්තොත් අපිට උපතේ ඇති වෙන ආබාධ අවම කර ගැනීම හැකියාව ලැබෙනවා විශේෂයෙන්ම උපත් ආබාධ වල වැඩියෙම තියෙන හෘද රෝග කියන බව තමයි දැනගන්න තියෙන්නේ ඉතින් ඒ නිසා මම ඊටමත් සතුටු වෙනවා අද ශ්‍රී ලංකා වෛද්‍ය සංගමයක් පෞල් සෞඛ්‍ය කාර්යාංශයත් එකතු වෙලා ලෝකයේම උපත් ආබාධ සිහිපත් කරන දවසේදී ඒ පිළිබඳව නැවත එකතු වෙලා රටේ දරුවන්ව කොහොමද අපි නිරෝගීව උපත් උපතට කියන්නේ නිරෝගී උපතක් වගේම නිරෝගී දරුවෙක් සමාජගත කරන්නේ කොහොමද කියන එක පිළිබඳව නැවත එකතු වෙලා කතා කරලා ගිය වසරේ තිබිච්චේ ජාතිය අන්තර ප්‍රඥාප්තිය නැවත අලුත් කළ සිහිපත් කරමින් ඒ සඳහා වැඩ පිළිවෙලක් යෙදීමට කටයුතු කිරීම පිළිබඳව මගේ ස්තුතිය ශ්‍රී ලංකා වෛද්‍ය සංගමයටත් ඒ වගේම පෞල් සෞඛ්‍ය කාර්යාංශයටත් ඒ වගේම සහයෝගය ලබා දෙන ලෝක සෞඛ්‍ය සංවිධානයටත් ඒ වගේම අනිකුත් මාච් ඔෆ් ඩයිම්ස් ආයතන ඇතුළු සහයෝගය දෙන සියලු ආයතනවලටත් අපේ ස්තුතිය පුද කරමින් අපි සියලු දෙනාම එකතු වෙලා ඒ වෙනුවෙන් වැඩි අවදානමක් ලබලා දීලා අපේ දරුවන්ට දරුවාගේ අයිතිය සුරක්ෂිත කරලා නිරෝගී වැඩි හිටියෙක් බවට යන්න පුළුවන් ඒ ඉඩ කඩ ටික අපි උදා කරලා දෙමු කියන මතක් කිරීමත් කරමින් මට මේ උත්සවයට ආරාධනා කිරීම පිළිබඳව අපේ වෛද්‍ය සංගමයට පෞල් සෞඛ්‍ය කාර්යාංශයට ස්තුතිය පුද කරමින් සිටු දිනටම සුබ දවසක් තමයි. Thank you madam. Next we will be listening to a recorded message from Dr. Razia Pense, WHO representative of Sri Lanka. on the stake of the united nations agencies on birth defects prevention and care each year over 3 million babies are born with a birth defect and many succumb to these in the who southeast asia region approximately 90000 newborns die due to major birth defects nearly 60% of all birth defects are preventable addressing this preventable mortality is critical to reaching key sustainable development goals on health and well-being what are some of the challenges what gets measures gets done to begin with birth defect surveillance is inadequate second inadequate capacity of trained health workforce for identifying and managing birth defects third Diagnosing and managing birth defects is resource intensive. The ongoing pandemic has only added to the complex situation. To cite an example, 
to what extent telemedicine can identify birth defects. For better surveillance, data capture, and use of data for generating evidence and aiding decision making, it is important for countries to collect and share data. WHO Southeast Asia Regional Newborn and Birth Defects Database is one such attempt. Around 400 live births with birth defects are reported annually to Ministry of Health in Sri Lanka. Preventing and managing these requires coordinated, multi-sectoral support with needed resource allocations, along with engagement of parents and families. The more common preventable birth defect, neural tube defects, is preventable through supplementation of folic acid, pre-pregnancy, and continued through pregnancy. With such a cost-effective intervention, we should have been able to eliminate this neural tube defect by now. Given the importance of evidence-based policies and interventions for prevention and management of birth defects, the 63rd World Health Assembly in 2010 passed a resolution calling for global action to address birth defects. The call urged member states to raise awareness of the significant impact birth defects have as a cause of childhood morbidity and mortality, and to strengthen research and further studies on etiology, diagnosis, and prevention of major birth defects through development of national plans for the implementation of effective interventions to prevent and manage birth defects. In addition, the Global Strategy for Women's, Children's and Adolescents Health 2016 to 2030 also focuses on birth defects. WHO, the US Center for Disease Control, and the International Clearing House for Birth Defects, Surveillance and Research convene annual training programs on the surveillance and prevention of birth defects for member states. WHO Southeast Asia Regional Office, in collaboration with US CDC, initiated a series of activities starting in 2011, including the development of a regional strategic framework that includes capacity building at country level on birth defect surveillance and response, and more than 350 hospitals and over 1,000 hospital staff have received training, monitoring, and problem-solving support. In Sri Lanka, WHO has supported establishment of a web-based system for birth defect surveillance, has worked with institutions to strengthen their capacities for birth defect surveillance, and raised awareness on birth defects and also advocated for preventive action. Today, WHO pledges a continued support to the Ministry of Health, to a long-term partner, the Sri Lanka Medical Association, to support initiatives reiterated in the Colombo Declaration 2020. Thank you. Next, to provide an insight on an inclusive society for individuals with Down syndrome, Dr. Saraji Vijay Sekara, Secretary of the Sri Lanka Medical Association Expert Committee in Rehabilitation and past president of the Sri Lanka Association for Child Development will be addressing. Good afternoon. Uh, dignitaries of the head table, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Kapila Jaratna, the co-chair of the subcommittee uh, for, on birth defects of SLMA for giving me this opportunity. Today, I'm going to talk, talk about one condition, uh, one common condition, uh, which is Down syndrome, you all know, uh, about uh, how to include them into the society. Actually, in this uh, World Birth Defect, uh, Defects uh, Declaration, we all talk about the prevention and the management. So uh, when this kind of babies are born, we need to include them into the society for give them a better outlook. So Down syndrome babies, uh, it's the commonest genetic abnormality worldwide. And um, one in 600 people will uh, affect, uh, there are one in 600 births will be affected by the Down syndrome. And we all know it's a genetic problem and uh, there are 321 chromosomes. And then many medical problems, including the heart, 
the brain, the gut, uh, and bone, uh, the vision and the hearing. So we all can manage this medically, but however, uh, the parents undergo a lot of social uh, uh, problems and psychological stress following the birth of a baby like this. So it is very important that uh, we integrate them into the society and alleviate the stresses of these parents. So what is an inclusive society? Uh, an inclusive society in any, any part of the world will aim at empowering and promoting the social, economic, and the political inclusion of all, irrespective of age, sex, disability, race, ethnicity, and so on and so forth. And so it is basically a society that leaves no one behind. So when you talk about Down syndrome, we know that they are born and they are at home, and then they start with the preschool education. So initial inclusion into the society starts with the inclusive education. So what is this inclusive education? Inclusive education is that these children are in par with the other children getting into the same classroom, going through the same curriculum, but however, having adaptations and needs according to their uh, the issues that they have. And also they, alongside their peers, they get into the, uh, the activities uh, with the other colleagues and then maintain according to their uh, abilities. So um, why is education needed for this syndrome, Down syndrome babies and for any, uh, for that matter, anybody who has a disability and everyone has a right for their education. And of course the state has to uh, ensure that equal access to primary and secondary education, vocational training and adult education and lifelong learning. So this is the, according to the article of Article 24 of UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So therefore, the inequality inclusive classroom, what do they have? They are in the same classroom as any other person, any other student, and uh, according to their abilities, they get, uh, uh, they get a chance to learn and with some accommodations, and then uh, needing uh, some, I, we know that these uh, Down syndrome babies have physical disabilities, so they may need physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech and language therapy, uh, going on with the uh, teaching part, and maybe a special education teacher helping them out in that. And um, now in, in uh, Sri Lanka and many other countries, I think the parents of normal children would wonder whether their children would be, uh, affected by having a, a differently able child in their classroom. But of course, the studies have shown that even the normal children have an increase of their abilities or the percent, uh, about 15% is a study done in Canada, uh, that inclusive classrooms, they have measured a 15% increase in their uh, abilities or the, uh, the scores if they have, if they are studying in an inclusive classroom, and also with the empathy and the compassion is more in uh, compared to the other children who are on the mainstream education. Now we have two systems of uh, education: that is the inclusion versus the mainstream. So, in the inclusion part, the student, regardless of their ability, they participates in the general education classroom. Uh, most of the time, it's at least 80% of the time, although it says 100%, at least 80% of the time. Whereas uh, in a mainstream, the student must meet a set of criteria to attend uh, to the general education system. And in an inclusion classroom, the curriculum is adapted and modified to, uh, to the need of the student, who will assume that it's a Down syndrome child. However, uh, but in the mainstream, the student must demonstrate the ability to work in the normal uh, existing curriculum. And uh, the general teacher, the general education teacher will oversee the activities of the student as well. But um, in the mainstream, the uh, special education teacher would come in and uh, oversee the students. So that is the difference between the inclusion and the mainstream. So, um, with this, uh, the, again, the studies have shown that if uh, one provide the 
appropriate inclusive education to these children with Down syndrome, they are benefited or they have uh, become more uh, conversant in their spoken language, uh, reading and writing schools, even in mathematics, general knowledge, and of course the social independence, so which is a positive impact in these children. And also it may be uh, ultimately carry on with their employment outcomes as well. Uh, and also there is another thing that there's no research showing that any benefit of education in special schools or special uh, classes in the children who have Down syndrome. So that has been proven. So basically the best is to have them in an inclusive education system. So what are the strengths of these Down syndrome babies? They have, although they have visual defects, this can be corrected by using spectacles, a simple thing. And uh, if there are cataracts, of course, we can do surgeries and correct them. So they have a strong visual awareness and they have visual learning skills. So they look at others and learn. And also uh, they, are, they have the ability to learn the signs, gestures, and the visual supports. And also they can read the written words if they are given the opportunity and taught them well. And um, also they, uh, as I said before, they have the strong desire to learn from the others. So they imitate the others. So that means if they have a good role model, uh, they will imitate them and they will gain their skills. That is another important way of getting them to be a normal or near normal person in the classroom or wherever the workplace or wherever they are or in the society. Um, so, uh, so benefits obviously, uh, they have better academic excellence and social independence. And uh, as I told before, the role models for positive speech, especially and behavior, because they may have behavioral problems and speech delays, so that can be improved. And um, also now, the, most of the parents, as I said, are worried about the normal kids when they have another Downs or disabled child in their classroom. But uh, actually they have found that it is uh, the, even the normal children gain a lot, not only with the academic scores, but uh, with their acceptance, the tolerance, patience and friendship. So obviously uh, it is a good thing to have inclusive education because both of them would uh, improve on their abilities. So, um, just going back to the Down syndrome, so they have delayed motor skills, as we know, because they have a lot. They are hypotonic babies, so they learn to uh, they they their ability to walk uh, starts a little later than a normal child, and fine motor and gross motor delays, and especially with clumsiness and manipulation difficulties, and their auditory and visual problems because they 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 may need hearing aids or sometimes a spectacle. And uh, the most uh, significant thing would be the speech and language delay, uh, with, especially with the problems with articulation, the comprehension and the expression, and their memory may be not as good, uh, or the auditory memory may not as good as a normal child. And um, also thinking and reasoning patterns may be uh, somewhat less, and also the concentration. So they need more support, obviously, in these classrooms uh, as a child and maybe as an adult or adolescent. And for those, they may need accommodations like special uh, support that we need, like a spectacle or a hearing aid, for example. Uh, so um, always, uh, when you have a child like this, engage them in all the conversations, even in the family, the society, or wherever they are. And also allow the child to learn from experience so that they will uh, retain it better. And uh, the, the small problems that come across let the child solve them, but you give the support only. And uh, appropriate physical contacts you uh, will encourage. And also be supportive rather than being overprotective. This is what happens mostly in Sri Lanka because we tend to be more overprotective towards this. Uh, I mean, any child, for even for our kids, we try to be overprotective, which is not a very good thing in the long run. And as the key thing is the down children, uh, children copy. So it is important to have a good role model, peers and classmates. So that is why the inclusive education works for them very well. And also the focus would be to make the child independent. So coming on from education uh, to the workplace, because we know that a lot of companies uh, employ Down syndrome uh, adults now, uh, especially the factories and so on, the 
breeding places. So uh, how should we uh, make it uh, uh, make it possible? The government or the non-governmental agencies should lead the way, especially to open up places for these people who have uh, disabilities. And then obviously they have to pick up the correct person. They have to recruit them, train them, and then um, keep them uh, by uh, letting them uh, know what they should know. I mean, paving the pathway and also uh, the productivity by them. They have to encourage them. And then communication methods, especially there are people who have uh, limited abilities to communicate, especially with Down syndrome. Some people may not be communicating, like they don't talk. So they have to use their gestures to uh, you know, indicate their needs and also to indicate what needs to be uh, done for them. So those things will have to be uh, done within the workplace. And there was actually one child whom uh, I treat, uh, he's not a child now anymore, he's an adult, but he works there. He doesn't talk, he's uh, non-verbal, but he works as a, a tea maker in a company, but he does a good job there. And I'm sure the, the employers are quite happy with him. Uh, likewise, like there are several people and there are people who are, I will show you in an, the next slide who have done, uh, excelled in their, uh, speech and how they have become uh, better people. And then of course the technology can be used to improve these children and also, um, and it will actually uh, will make the company uh, the success and also uh, for their success as well. And then they should be encouraged to participate in their work. So basically uh, when it comes to the society, so it's mainly starting with education, going on to the workplace and in the society to uh, lead as a, better uh, individual. So uh, when you talk about limitations, the limitations are in the typical society, but not in the individuals with Down syndrome. You can see that many academics and entrepreneurs, athletes, designers, music players, playwrights, supermodels have been, uh, these are the pictures of them. So they have become these uh, people. So obviously, there's no limit in Down syndrome if you stimulate them well. And even in Sri Lanka, we have good role models. And uh, actually, for the Women's Day, we have 10 women speaking and out of them is a Down syndrome lady girl, uh, Nilshani. So obviously, there's scope for them. And I think we have to include them in the society. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. This brings us to the end of today's agenda and to give the closing remarks and to end the session, I cordially invite Dr. Dineshani Hetiarachi, convener of the Expert Committee on Birth Defects, SLMA. Distinguished members of the head table and invitees, Honorable Dr. Sudarshini Fernandopulle, State Minister of Primary Health Care, Epidemics and COVID Disease Control, Professor Vajira Desanayaka and Dr. Kapila Jayaratna, co-chairpersons of the Expert Committee on Birth Defects. Dr. Padma Gunaratna, President, Sri Lanka Medical Association. Dr. Chitramali De Silva, Director, Family Health Bureau. And all the distinguished speakers joining us virtually representing the March of Dimes and the World Health Organization. And my dear participants, on behalf of the organizing committee, it is my honor and pleasure to say a few words at this important event to commemorate the World Birth Defects Day and to revisit and recall the actions taken by Sri Lanka to address these issues that were raised today. I express my sincere gratitude to all the speakers who have graced this occasion. And I also express my gratitude to all those who participated virtually. It is undoubtedly enriched, it has undoubtedly enriched our knowledge base and also encouraged us to commit ourselves to take action, to minimize birth defects and to create an inclusive world for those living with birth defects through care and support. Since we have listened to a very insightful and useful deliberation throughout the day, I wish to take no more of your valuable time. In conclusion, I wish to thank all of you who has participated virtually and on site and all the research persons for their contribution. Thank you.